Adventures of Sir Michael Skeeping. Setting, 1980s. Port Authority, New York. Michael Skeeping, carrying a large suitcase, the camera watching him from afar. No sound. Skeeping puts his suitcase next to a man and his son sitting at a table. He speaks briefly, clearly asking if they will watch his case. The father smiles and nods. Skeeping goes to the counter and orders a kid's meal. He gets an extra toy with the meal. He returns to the couple and gives the toy to the little boy. All smile. Suddenly, Skeeping looks at his watch, hurriedly grabs his case, shakes father and son's hand, minds panic, and rushes away. The father smiles, then realizes his suitcase gone. He leaps out, furious. The camera zooms in on the little boy happily engrossed in the toy. Then the camera whips round and chases after Skeeping. Our POV takes us hurriedly out of the terminal and onto the street. The camera searches for Skeeping, turns, and crashes into Calvin. <laughs> oh, well, sweetie, you are positively lethal with that frigging thing. Where have you been? I... Never mind, sweet boy, we've no time. I have a bar to run and an event to host. You can film there to your heart's content. If you want me to do a commentary in New York, the next time, be on time. Come on, we'll get a cab. Calvin likes a cigarette. Michael Skeeping approaches him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? I wonder, could I... Um... Uh, here you go. Here you go. It's Michael a cigarette. But I'm grateful, of course. But I usually only smoke the occasional cigar. I was actually about to inquire as to the whereabouts of a good and inexpensive hotel. I love your accent. I love your accent. Thank you. Yours is charming, too. He looks at the camera. And who is this? This is Wall. He's doing a project for Parsons. Really? I was a Parson once. You were at Parsons? At? It's a film school. Film school for Parsons. Never heard of such a wonderful idea. America, the beautiful America, the innovative. Hello, Wall. I. Are you as wise as Pooh's old friend, Wall? Were your parents A.A. A. Milne fans? It's short for Wallace. And Wall is the wise old owl. But my Wall is way less chatty. Do you like Pooh? A.A. A. Milne is so my favorite English writer. Disney just did not get it. Ah, a fellow Pooh fan. Have you read Milne's poems? No. Then we have much to share. My name is Michael, Sir Michael Aloysius Dornford Skeeping. And what are you known as? <laughs> oh, never mind what I'm known as, hon. My name is Calvin. My friends call me Calvin Klein. Are you the gentleman who is involved in underwear? Oh, God, have I been involved in underwear? Uh, no, hon, it's a nickname. Well, Calvin, do you know of a cheap hotel, uh, preferably with a cheap bar, where I could make myself comfortable? Come to my club, honey. I'll make you as comfortable as you want to be. No oh, club. I'm a member of several clubs in London. Calvin raises a hand and a cab appears. He links arms with Michael and waltzes off. Michael's still talking. One of Milton's most poignant pieces, and my favourite, is Vespers. Little boy kneels at the foot of the bed, droops on the little hand's little gold head. Hush, hush, whisper who dares. Christopher Robin is saying his prayers. I remember kneeling by my bed for nightly prayer, and nanny and mother would watch me, such innocence. Now all gone, of course. I had several books in my trunk, but they're bloody well gone too. Lost in the bowels of a baggage cock up. Beginning the cab, the following intro is her as they <laughs> After the performance at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre for England's Prince Philip, which made Michael Skeeping famous or notorious, he left England quietly. That is, quietly for him. It is difficult to know exactly what or who he was in interviews about his infamous Globe show. After his release from jail, Skeeping claimed to have been a British Navy captain, a parson, a hotel owner, a hotel owner, as he himself said, in countless other occupations, including actor, producer, director, teacher, and supermarket manager. Subsequent inquiries into his background show most of these stories to be imaginary. 
except for two discoveries. A relief manager for several Tesco supermarkets, a sudden outbreak of shoplifting, and massive stock losses forced the company to employ private detectives to no avail. Another name, Skeeping, organized a school's theater festival, which mysteriously lost all its money after the award ceremony. The festival also lost Michael Skeeping, was then using the name Mickey Skipping. No charges were preferred. The young filmmaker Wallace Francis Climelia, who decided to record a weekend with his New York Village friends, can only be lauded for this film and congratulated on his luck in being there. It is a fascinating clash of cultures which finally blend with a happy, though disturbed, ending. And happy, though disturbing, just about sums up the man who called himself Sir Michael Skeeping. The title was self-conferred. Whatever is past and why ever performed so inappropriately before Prince Philip, consort of the then Queen of England, Elizabeth, this film of the last part of his life is at least a fairly accurate record. The cab arrives at the village. This is my bar, the Hungry Heffalump. Splendid. What a splendid name. What do you think, Wal? Um, great. So, this is the village. Yeah, what do you think? I shall always think of it as the village in the middle of the Hundred Acre Wood. Oh, that's so sweet. I feel as if I am home. Sir Mike, you are. Let's get in there and let's hear some of that poetry. They entered the bar, the gay clientele, for the first, most part, outrageously dressed. Everybody, this is Sir Michael from England. He's a friend of Pooh. Is he a friend of Dorothy, too? Lots of whistles <laughs> and friendly laughs. Who cares? He's a friend of mine and he's welcome here. Bless you, Calvin. Beach. Make it short, honey. <laughs> nice. Let's hear it. Thank you, Calvin. Thank you all. A short speech, honey. Who better to quote than Winnie the Pooh then? Isn't it funny? I'll be like honey, and I like all of you. Now I would like a drink. <laughs> well done. Yes. Epic. Beautifully put. Calvin slaps Michael playfully on the butt. Michael reciprocates with a much harder slap that makes Calvin's eyes water. Ooh, well, that was a bit sharp, sweet boy. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, old love. I've misjudged it. Don't know my own strength. Probably fuzzy from lack of alcohol and food. Sir Michael, you are just a bit wicked, I think. Oh, man, a drink for my friend, Sir Michael. Bless you, Calvin. Bartender, I wonder if you stock any single malt. Oh, How's about uh, Highland Park? Omen. What a wonderful name. Weave a circle round him thrice, for he on honeydew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise. Highland Park. Yes, please. Omen, how did you get such a majestic name? Omen is tall, sexy, and fit as a horny fiddle. My name's Damien. Like the movie, Damien. Omen, Omen 3. It's stuck. Gregory Peck. One of the old school. Island Park, ice and water. A little ice water on the side, please, Omen. I never insult a single monk by freezing it. There is a circle in hell for people who commit that particular sin. I'll no doubt end up in hell, but at least they won't get me for mistreating malt whiskey. Omen, I can't help noticing that you're wearing a singularly fetching sarong. I wonder who you're hoping to fetch. In fact, many of the clientele are decked in their finest feathers, apparently. Well, Michael, you are about to witness a fashion duel. Ah. It was Wall's idea. Wall? <laughs> I'd forgotten you were there, little mouse. He got me to challenge Jamie's bar down the street to see who had the best dressed customers. But nine tonight, Jamie and I will lead our finest and let battle commence. Battle? Well, sort of. We'll be selling little beanie chickens and bouquets to the audience. Proceeds for the hospice. The first the contestants line up for the pageant. Then each contestant walks down the catwalk. I'm not walking. I'm definitely going to sachet. Whatever. 
as they walk down the catwalk, the audience can either give them the bird or the bouquet. And we add up who gets the most bouquets and announce the winner. Ah, what fun. Oh, I just had an idea, Michael. You could be the master of ceremonies. Jamie and I were going to do it with your voice. You'll be such a hit. Calvin, dear Calvin, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to repay you for your kindness. And what a lark. <laughs> Ladies, I would like to introduce you to the master of ceremonies for tonight's Battle of the Queens, Sir Michael Skeeping. <laughs> All right. Hey. 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 Montage of shots. As Michael joins each group at the bar, embracing them, leaning on the bar, chatting frame after frame is frozen and moves to form a ring of pictures. In each frame, Michael is surreptitiously sealing tips from the bar, dipping into purses. After a while, the bar quietens as people go off to get ready for the big event. Michael sits quietly for a moment, then turns to the camera, speaking directly to Wall. Wall, dear boy, you're so quiet, so patient, I keep forgetting you're there. Yeah, it's like I am a camera sort of thing. You saw, didn't you? Yeah. I don't know why I do it, Wall. My mum and dad were good to me, they taught me they were nice, polite, hardworking, honest. Nobody beat me, we lived in a lovely neighborhood. I went to a nice school with lovely teachers, and I've been ripping people off all my life. I'd like to say it's a disease, but bugger that. I hate excuses. Everyone's so nice here. They've been so friendly. Yeah, they welcomed me with open arms. They made me feel at home and I've ripped them off. What am I, Wal? I don't know. Me neither. It's not very nice. No shit, Sherlock. Well, I think everything is going to be fantastic, frankly. Wall swings around and we see Calvin at the end of the bar. Calvin, you're fantastic, dear friend. Michael, are you okay? He walks to Michael and sits by him, concerned. Michael's face is like stone. Wallace turns the camera on him. He's hungry. He just got into town, so... Oh, my God, we've been plying you with drink for hours. I forced you to MC the pageant. You've probably gotten the most horrendous case of culture shock. I haven't even offered you a bite to eat. What must you think? He falters. Then the old Michael returns. I think I, I, think I would love something to eat. I also think that you may be one of the nicest people in the world, as is Wall and so many of my new found friends here. Let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. And if we live, well, we'll deal with the hangover and the indigestion in the morning. And I would like... He pulls out handfuls of cash. ...to make a contribution to the hospice. Oh, Michael, no. No, not a word. Omen, oh, take this money and put it in the pot for the hospice. Michael throws the money on the bar. I'll rustle up a snack. Michael, my sweet boy, thank you. Calvin rushes off. Michael slips a handful of the money on the bar back into his pocket and turns to Wall. Well, it's a start, Wall, my son. It's a start. Scene three. Chris, a quiet, thin figure, stands before a full-length mirror in the back room of Heffalum. He is wearing an ivory-colored slip, shoulders bony, Cheekbones pronounced, breathing shallow. He clutches a beautiful dress. He lifts it up to his shoulders. It is clearly too big for him. His bare arms protrude childlike in their sparseness. Blackout. Scene four, the bar. Michael Hahn, I'm going to go and dress. I will return reborn. Calvin, I shall bait with weighted bro. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you return your way with break bait 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no no wait wait oh I think we could do with a rest would you like to have a, a nap while I make myself even more beautiful Calvin Calvin no oh, that's an excellent idea I shall awake 
refreshed and ready for anything. Scene five. Chris, still before the mirror, coughs small. Then until he heaves for breaths, he brings the dress up to his mouth involuntarily, desperately. He falls to his knees, head bowed. From outside the room, we hear a booming voice, half singing, half declaiming. The changing guards at Buckingham Palace. Christopher Robin went down with Alice. Michael and Callan burst in full of himself and drink. They see Chris and stop. Hush. Hush. Whisper who dares. Chris. Oh, you poor love. He crushes. He rushes to comfort Chris. Sorry. I'm sorry. A dress. A beautiful dress it is, too. I very much look forward to seeing you wear it. Chris, lovey, would you like us to help you put it on? I I don't. I thought I could put, a, put on a good show, but I'm having a bad day. I don't think I can even walk down the cat, the catwalk. Christopher, I would be honored if you would let me carry you to the stage so that you might see and be seen. Calvin, might we arrange a comfortable chair for dear Christopher? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, God, I hate this. Dying is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> hush, hush, whisper who dares. Christopher Robin is saying his prayers. What is that? That is from a poem about beauty and innocence. Now. Let us stop crying onto your frock and make you beautiful. I'm Chris. I am Michael Skeeping. Sir Michael Skeeping. I love your accent. And I yours. Well, I said mine, sir. Well, would you leave my newfound friend in peace for a moment? At least until she's got her makeup on. Now we're lowers and blackout. Scene six, the street. There's a ramp in the middle of the street. On one side is the hungry heffalump crowd. On the other, Jamie's. The ramp is pink, frau frau, and wonderfully lacy. Jamie and his team have just emerged. Wall zooms in on Jamie, imperious and supremely confident. Jamie is flanked by Tilda, beautiful in a deep gold shimmering gown. Wall's Mike picks up. Jamie's saying, mm, Of course, it's a competition. Let the best queen win. But if it's not, we fuck them over. Jamie suddenly sees Wall. Get away now. Oh, I forgot. I still got me. Ladies, girls, guys, good afternoon and welcome to the fashion duel in which you pick the winners. My name's Calvin and I run the Hungry Heffalum. If you've never visited, why not? You'll be welcome. You're a regular customer, thank you. Jamie's Bar, and this is Jamie, the co-sponsor of this event. Would you like to say a few words, Jamie? No, thank you. Okie dokie then. Now I'd like to introduce our guest of honor and master of ceremonies, all the way from England. Will you please welcome Sir Michael Skeeping? Thank you, Calvin and Jamie, for making this extraordinary event possible. The rules are simple. If you want to vote for one or more of our bevy of beauties as they walk down the catwalk, you buy a bag of little beanie chickens and bouquets. All proceeds go to St. Veronica's Hospice. A vote for the contestants means you throw a bouquet. Otherwise, you give them the bird. Bag vendors are passing amongst you now. Calvin holds up a beady bird. Some kind of macaw or parrot. Look, aren't they cute? I had an aunt who looked just like this, though her nose was larger. Now, at the end of the day, you can take your toys home to your nieces and nephews, or just drop them in the boxes on the pavement, and we'll wash them and give them to a deserving course. And, of course, all the monies for the beanies goes to the AIDS hospice on uh, Calvin... Christopher Street. And where better. The beanies are ten bucks a bag, but if you wanted to pay more, nobody would stop you. Before the parade begins, I would also like to introduce Chris, who will be the maid of honor who hands the prize 
to whoever is crowned queen for the day. All right. Bring it. Montage of crowd shots, contestants showing off their frocks and general revelry. Finally, there are only two contestants left, Tilda and Omen. What an exciting afternoon. I, I wonder, since these two lovely ladies have drawn a tie twice now, if I might declare them joint winners. Great. No. Tilda is one of my customers. Jamie's wants the crown. I've got enough cash here to buy all the beanies the audience needs. Hand them out. I'll pay and may the best bar win. Jamie. 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 Okay, let's all calm down. Oh, Fuck wanker. off. Fuck off. Get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. We need the wanker. We need the wanker. Beanies, beer cans, hot dogs, fruit fly through the air. Calvin tries to call for order. Michael picks Chris up and starts to leave. A can of beer flies and Michael, he catches it by reflex. He staggers, breathing heavily. There is a sick person here. Someone look after Chris. Michael sits heavily. There is a dying man here. A dying man. For God's sake, control yourselves. Are you animals or what? As suddenly as it began, the riot is over. Calvin escorts Chris across the street to the heffalo. The camera moves to Michael, slumped in the chair. That was awesome. I don't think anyone's going to get better shots than this. Michael doesn't move. Are you okay? The camera zooms closer. Michael is clearly dead. Shit. This is like, what an ending. Little boy kneels at the foot of the bed. Troops on the little hands, little gold head. Hush, hush. Whisper who dares. Christopher Robin is saying his prayers. God bless mummy. I know that's right. Wasn't it fun in the bath tonight? The cold so cold and the hot so hot. Oh, God bless daddy. I quite forgot. If I can open my fingers a little bit more, I can see Nanny's dressing gown on the door. It's a beautiful blue, but it hasn't a hood. Oh, God bless Nanny and make her good. Mine has a hood, and I lie in bed and pull the hood right over my head. And I shut my eyes and I curl up small, and nobody knows that I'm there at all. Oh, thank you, God, for a lovely day. And what was the other I had to say? I said, bless Daddy. So what can it be? Oh, now I remember. God bless me. Little boy kneels at the foot of the bed, droops on the little hands, little gold head. Hush, hush, whisper, who dares? Christopher, what? Say his prayers. End. <laughs>